In this video, we're going to attempt to replace the battery on the HP uh, 3478A uh, multimeter. This particular meter uses a uh, 3 volt lithium battery to hold the uh, calibration constants in a 5101 uh, CMOS static RAM. Um, most of these units uh, you know, are approaching you know, 20 years old, so it's um, about time to replace the, uh, the original uh, lithium battery. Um, the uh, 5101 static RAM uh, needs about 2 volts to maintain the uh, data retention. And it draws around uh, 10 microamps. Here's the data sheet for a similar one. The battery basically, well, it does just connect to the, the VCC line. The VCC for data retention, minimum of 2 volts. And that maximum current draw, they say, is uh, 10 microamps, so it can be a little less. So. Uh, you normally get about, you know, 10 years of lifetime out of these uh, lithium batteries, but. Uh, you can some you know some of them will last a little bit longer. You can't um, go by the voltage. I'll show you because of the the lithium batteries have a, a very flat discharge rate. Right now it's three, you know, three volts. Um, the flat discharge rate means that uh, it literally um, it could be working one day and it could stop working the next day. Now, the trick is we have to replace that battery while maintaining a uh, two volts onto the uh, 5101 CMOS RAM. Thankfully, HP um, has a diode. This is called diode oring. When th the uh, unit is powered, it has a constant 5 volts provided to the pin 22. And the battery, BT701, is uh, diode ored. Basically, it's fired in parallel. So when the system power is off, it has uh, 3 volts maintaining on the VCC line. What we're going to do is I made a little battery pack with two AAA batteries, a uh, current limiting uh, 470 ohm resistor and a 1N914 diode. We're going to yeah, basically solder in our own backup, temporary backup voltage um, while we'll replace the battery while the system is powered just in case you know, if there was a power outage or anything we want to have a uh, battery backup make sure you tape the batteries in the little holders because you don't want them falling out that would uh, not be good so we basically need to be extra careful when we do this another problem is uh, uh, because uh, the system um, uh, the ground the AC ground and the uh, of the uh, multimeter and the Soldering irons, like on a well or soldering iron, uh, we can't uh, use a grounded uh, soldering iron because if we were to touch, you know, solder to this point, we're essentially shorting our batteries to ground. Um, I'm touching one probe to my uh, outlet case, ground. Now I'm touching the uh, soldering iron. I can kind of. You know. It's grounded. Trust me. It's just hard to get with only one hand. Um, so what we're gonna do to alleviate that is I have um. 
an old Weller ungrounded soldering iron, soldering station here. There's no ground. Um, you can, if you only have a grounded soldering iron, you can um, actually unplug it. Or let it heat up, you know, and then unplug it. But, uh, I think you'd rather better off just kind of finding a, a soldering iron. Or the replacement battery that we're going to be using is a Tadran TLH-5955-P found it at DigiKey. Uh, it's the two-thirds AA size. It's actually 3.6 volts, so that's okay. Because uh, the CMOS RAM actually, I think it can go up to like 7 volts, so a little more voltage is no problem. It's available from DigiKey, uh, part number 439-1033-ND. Um, make sure you want to get the axial leads. That means it has the uh, leads coming out like that. And make sure you uh, mark your positive. I put a little red marker on the uh, positive lead. First thing we do is we're going to power up our unit. Self test, okay. That means it uh, should be working. Don't worry about the random voltages, that's just uh, from the uh, high impedance of the uh, input. Now we're going to need to be really careful because the, it is powered and we don't want to short anything out. So based on um, uh, this capacitor, C510, essentially where we want to solder a positive of our battery pack too. And since this is like common ground, we can um, use just a you know system ground. There's a nice uh, ground point right here we can use. C510 It's right here, you can actually see pin 22 is labeled so we want to go onto the left left side, left solder pad which is going to pin 22 that'll be the positive be that's this I just put electrical tape on there just to keep it from shorting out if it were to touch this is going to go to the uh, left pad there on C510 Here's the solder pads for the original battery. It's labeled BT701. This is the plus. This is the minus. We have our backup installed in parallel. And uh, double checking the front panel it looks okay. No error messages. Now to remove the battery helps to add a little bit of, I'll probably do the ground first, helps to add a little bit of solder to it. But yeah, we can just pull it right out of the bottom. Yeah, it just popped right out. Original battery, internal cell, lithium cell, 
or it even has HP part number on it. Um, no date, but I imagine it's uh, this is a earlier model, uh, HP 3478A, so I bet you it probably around you know 1985 or so. No, it's you know pushing way more than the 10 year limit. Next, we're going to want to clean out our uh, solder holes there. I got a little bit of a uh, solder wick. Um, I get the solder wick from Hamfest, and it tends to be dried out. So this is just a uh, rosin. I just add a few drops of rosin to the uh, cider wick. Because um, the real cider wick is really expensive, but the cheap stuff is like a dollar a roll. side. Don't, uh, that test point I thought would have the battery voltage on it, but it doesn't. It's for something else. So uh, you can see the nice clean holes ready for the new battery. Now yeah. I just noticed they have their, okay, yeah, they have the plus and the minus, but they have a little, you know, nib on the minus side, so <laughs> usually it looks like the positive. That's, oh wow, yeah. Notice that. Yeah, make sure you get your positive and minus right. That could be. Here's the new battery. side is the uh, positive doesn't fit flat, but I think we're gonna we'd be we're gonna be okay. Probably should have cleaned the uh, battery leads ahead of time. 
I do It was a new battery, so. Looks pretty good. Oh, I, I adjusted the leads so the uh, manufacture date on the battery went up because you, you always want to go by the dates of the batteries and not the voltage, like I said. So it just makes it easier to see the manufacture date. Uh, May 2013, I guess that's what it says. I suppose you should double check your battery voltage. I never bothered to check to see if it was good. Again, don't worry about the random numbers. That's just because it has a high impedance. Um, a lot of people think there's something wrong with it. But that's. Uh, I guess we should uh, turn off the power and disconnect the uh, AC. So it should be on the battery right now. Looks okay. See back in. Better work. Oh yeah. And then next we'll probably want to um get the date that we changed off the battery just so you know and uh, redo it. Um. You probably want to you know not wait ten years. You probably want to maybe replace them every five years or so or. Whatever, just to uh, you know, preventive maintenance. Another thing you want to do on these uh, older styles, uh, try to get the AC uh, secondary wires away from these uh, isolation transformers. Uh, it's just they kind of let them flop. That was uh, that's pro probably not good, but you know HP did it, so they must have tested it. But it just uh, you want to keep these uh, secondary wires away from your. Uh, uh, it's actually a, a serial data link, isolation link. Um, there's two separate. This is the analog board. It's on a, called a floating chassis. This is the digital board, which is on a, the common chassis. There you go. It wasn't too hard now, was it? Okay. 